herb. Herb is a plant. I mean, herbs are good for everything. Welcome, you made the trip to Eugene Cannabis TV. We're here for another episode, and we're talking about cannabis and the law and uh, things of that nature. Uh, yeah. I've got my friend Reverend Will here, and Reverend Will is coming out tonight. He's a pothead, and you can see it right here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Pope of Pot. <laughs> right. At least this kind of pot. Yeah, this is the pothead, and we expect to see these quite a bit. We're going to be seeing, I believe it'll be at the uh, Emerald Empire Hemp Fest. I believe there'll be a guy marking them there, so... We had a lot of fun with them. Uh, we're going to pick up some uh, synthetic uh, fake, so you, if you will, uh, pot plants to stick in the top of that, and, uh, and then it'll be complete. So we're going to expect to have a lot of fun with it. I had to take it off. It was squeezing my head. Yeah, it's a little warm, and it squeezed the head a little bit, so <clears throat> you didn't want to wear it too long tonight. But So anyway, <clears throat> we get started here. Uh, I've gone through the news stories like I usually do to see what we want to talk about on the show. and. <clears throat> Just in one uh, news digest, I came across a whole bunch of things happening in the marijuana uh, legalization, decriminalization thing, and I instead of <coughs> couldn't have time, didn't have time for all these stories, so I'm just going to read the headlines. <coughs> and again, this is off of one day of uh, digest. <coughs> Maryland Senate okays marijuana decriminalization. Uh, New Hampshire marijuana legalization bill was defeated. The Ver Vermont marijuana legalization bill was filed, <clears throat> and in uh, Nevada, they introduced a, a legalization bill. So, <clears throat> different things, and, and of course, right here in Oregon, uh, we, we, you know, we have the initiative, uh, not initiative, but uh, uh, a measure going through Congress, uh, through our legislature. <clears throat> and according to here, now, <clears throat> Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, and of course, Oregon or states with legalization bills that have been or will be filed. <clears throat> so I like to say the walls are coming down. Well, it also says the legalization bill died earlier this year in Hawaii and also uh, in New Hampshire. But another New Hampshire legalization bill is still alive. So we're still working it. That's one of the things that's going on, folks. We have to let you know about these things. That's right. In Hawaii, uh, we reported on this when we read that they had filed. Uh, just the fact that they filed uh, really excited me because Hawaii was the first state to get medical marijuana through the leg legislature. They didn't do it through an initiative like everybody else did. They actually went, they were the first one to actually go through the legislature. <clears throat> and it turned out Hawaii was the first state to file a legalization initiative after Washington and Colorado passed theirs. And so uh, it was exciting to see Hawaii. Uh, uh, going through the legislature for legalization, uh, but even though it did fail. But the fact that they're even appearing is... is and we also have our industrial legalization bill, which went through. And as far as I know, that's uh, the first of its kind, even though we are still impotent in the process of being able to actually put a plant in the ground. I think there's some other states that are the same, the same as we are, that yeah. we actually have it legalized. It seemed to me, I can't remember for sure, but it seemed to me like there are some other states. But so now if we but can get states' rights active, yeah. then we will be able to tell the federal government to quit trying to blackmail us by telling us they're not going to pave our roads or help us in our industry in the forest. Whoa. Yeah, I'm sick and tired of being blackmailed. I'd really like for us all to stand up and make a difference. Yep. Yeah, definitely. So, so the fact that they, and another thing too, uh, and in Nevada, that the legalization uh, bill was introduced in the, in the legislature in Nevada, that's, it wasn't long ago, it seemed like that uh, Nevada was <coughs> hard, you get a hard time for having to join. Hardcore, right? You know? Yep, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's great. I, you know, like I said, the walls are coming, coming down. So do your part to bring the walls down. Well, see, when we're talking about Nevada, you mentioned uh, Joe Hogan, the Democrat from Las Vegas, who introduced Assembly Bill 402, which would allow people 21 and over to possess up to one ounce of marijuana and would set up a system of state regulation and taxation of marijuana commerce, which is what we're trying to get going here. And it drives me crazy when I hear the mayor talking about how we have to tax our people, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Instead of just allowing legalization to happen here, 
and then you can tax us. And we wouldn't care about paying that money. You know, seriously, all the people who don't want to pay taxes, you shall be voting for legalization. From legalization comes taxation. I mean, look, it happened in Oak Oaksterdam in Oakland, California. They worked it with the city council there where they were paying taxes to keep the schools open. Hey, if you can't hear me, to keep the schools open, they tax the people in Oakland. Yay! Okay, enough of that. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh... <clears throat> It's kind of a no-brainer, but uh, uh, we still got to keep. It's a no-brainer for those of us that think outside the box. You know, all these people who stay inside the box, they're going to sit there and complain about paying taxes. Okay. <laughs> there used to be a website. I haven't looked, uh, but it used to be a website called TaxMePlease.com, and that was all the whole thing about that was yeah, legalize it. I'd love to pay taxes on it. Legalize it, and I'll pay all pay taxes gladly. Well, you know, the other thing is the industries that you know would be sprouting up from being around you know we've got all kinds of things that could be made uh, from the different byproducts that come off of the pot plant it's just one of those things that the people don't see it because they don't want to see it because they keep hearing it's illegal and if we had a lawyer who was worth of salt we would sue the federal government for these lies that they put out this slander and this Oh, God, it's so crazy, you know, that they're, they have a monopoly through the Food and Drug Administration. I mean, okay, so this drug kills people because of the side effects. Oh, but it's okay because it came through the Food and Drug Administration. Yep. Uh -huh. And secondhand smoke? Yeah, you want to talk about secondhand smoke from cigarettes? I'm so sick and tired of not being able to walk down my street without having to experience secondhand and tertiary smoke from cigarettes, which is legal, but it's killing hundreds of thousands of people every year. And all you straight people can't figure this out. How is that? Are you just that medicated from pharmaceuticals and drinking? that you can't figure out that smoking a cigarette, walking down the street with your child in your arms is recklessly endangering that child and everyone else who's around you. That's right. Let's uh, jump this editorial real quick, the Register Guard. This is kind of exciting. I found it exciting anyway. March 20th, the edit uh, editorial in the Register Guard titled, Think Ahead on Marijuana. The subtitle, What Would a Tax and Regulatory System Look Like? <clears throat> the first paragraph reads, Oregonians have defeated an initiative to legalize marijuana last November, but they haven't heard the last of the idea. New proposals, probably better written than last year's Measure 80, are likely to be on the ballot next year or in 2016, and a bill to legalize marijuana has been introduced in the current legislative session. If Oregon ever makes pot legal, as has already occurred in Washington State and Colorado, lawmakers and citizens should be prepared. So what they're saying is that we should look at their system and look at the good and the bad and, and so that when we do it, our, our, we do it, we can profit from uh, the way they did it and, what we, and try to correct that. So I'm really glad the Registered Guard, thank you the Registered Guard for catching up. I said that the day after the election and they, they finally figured it out. So congratulations Registered Guard, you caught up with me. <laughs> so you know, one of the things that I have the biggest problem with is pride. I believe that's why the mayor and the chief of police and all these other people don't want to talk to me because I don't want to back down on this. So I am declaring 420 as the Pope of Pot. I am declaring 420 to be Marijuana Pride Day. So either at 420 in the morning or 420 in the evening or both. And you can do it at 420 for other countries and other cities around the country. I don't care. Do it as much as you want. But understand, do it in public. I'm sick and tired of this crap that the medicine that we have is not good enough to be recommended or prescribed for us as it should be. Our doctors don't have the balls to stand up and tell the federal government that it's more important to help the people that they take care of to have a better quality of life than it is for them to be afraid of losing their jobs. And so on 420, at 420, we're having a puffin' at 420 party. And we're going to have it everywhere. I would love for this to go national. You know people in Detroit, Michigan. You know people in Wyoming, Nebraska, wherever. Give them a holler. Tell them 420 in the morning, 420 in the evening. Puffin. For 420. It's going to be Marijuana Pride Day. 
and I'm really hoping to get as much support as possible. I'd love to see thousands of people in the streets of different parties. Create your own party. Have Ooh. your own potluck. Yeah. <laughs> we will have a potluck at the Ball Branch if you don't have a place where you feel that you can go and have the kind of support that you would need in order to come out. Well, understand, I come out, I've been out, and I'm staying out as long as it takes in order to make this difference for our children and our grandchildren. Because right now is a turning point in this world and the consciousness needs to be shifted. We've tried it with Barbara Marks Hubbard who is running for the presidency with a consciousness aware moment. We've done it with drumming. It's time to do it with the most beneficial medical process on the planet, marijuana. Break it down, use it in all its components. You can use it for food, you can use it for energy, you can use it for your car, you can use it to wear clothing, you can build your house out of it. Now with all that going on, do you not understand why it's illegal? Because it's a collusory process between the government and these organizations that want to keep it stifled. Rick Simpson, you're my hero. You're one of my heroes. You know, it's something that Rick Simpson oil is curing cancer and I don't know how many times or how many places I've tried to tell cancer patients and their families that no matter how much money you spend, you're not going to be able to heal your family members if you are looking in the wrong arena. And right now, marijuana is the right arena. We have Rick Simpson's oil, which you can take internally made out of budage, or you can use it topically to work with skin cancer. There are so many benefits to this, and this is without doing research, folks, because we're not allowed to do research. And we now have a word from our Eugene. That's right. We want to wrap this up, and don't forget uh, mm -hmm. Bull Branch. Now, for those of you who don't know the Bull Branch, it's in Franklin Boulevard, behind the Dairy Mart, uh, Saturday. April 20th, 420, as the celebration at the Bull Branch. It's open to the public, so come on by, and we're going to have our poster contest. The Emerald Empire Hemp Fest post contest will be announcing the winners on 420 at the 420 party. So uh, send me an email to dankbagman at hotmail.com. If you're an artist and like to uh, design a poster for the Hemp Fest, get in the contest. We've got some neat prizes, and it could be a whole lot of fun, and you can help the Hemp Fest at the same time. Yeah, we can always use help. You know, we always need volunteers. We need uh, people to contact their friends who have food booths and other things so that they can all come to this party. It happens the weekend after the Oregon Country Fair. So anybody that you've got coming and visiting you for the fair, remind them that we're having the Hemp Fest afterwards. Whitaker neighborhood, hope you pay attention this year. It's not too far. I hope you people can find your way. <laughs> you bet. So we're out of here. I'll see you. Take care. And now, a message from the American Marijuana Growers Association. Hi, I'm a farmer, and I work hard every day to grow high-quality marijuana, the biggest cash crop in these United States. I'd like to thank you for your support of U.S. marijuana policy. Because marijuana is illegal, I don't have to pay taxes. Even better, prohibition leads to artificially inflated prices, which means a better quality of life for me and my family, as long as I don't get caught. Just as importantly, your tax dollars support thousands of U.S. agents who work tirelessly to keep low-grade foreign marijuana out of our country. So thank you, America. And remember, whether you're nauseated from chemotherapy or just in the mood for a nice cool buzz, choose the best pot in the world. American homegrown. Hi, and welcome back to the second segment of Eugene Cannabis TV. I'm Eric from Medicinal Horizons, and this is Joe from The Greener Side. In the last segment, Dan and the Rev talked about a few medical marijuana initiatives that are going on around the nation. Um, today we're going to discuss one that is here in Oregon. It is House Bill 3460. And what House Bill 3460 is, is a bill to license and regulate medical marijuana dispensaries. Um, this is similar to 
um, Measure 74 a couple of years back, which was the same thing. It did not pass. Um, one of the reasons why we want to discuss this bill in particular is um, myself and Joe both have experience working in the medical marijuana resource center field. Um, otherwise, some people know them as dispensaries. And these are really important. I think that a lot of people uh, misunderstand what the dispensary is and the purpose that they serve in the community. Um, one of the things that I'd like to talk about, and Joe as well, is some of our uh, personal experiences working at uh, dispensaries and centers like that and um, why they're important. Um, Joe, yeah, they, really, uh, they really touch the lives of each individual that comes in and you know, really is seeking the true help for the, from the resource center and from the person behind the counter and whatnot because they're actually divulging their life stories and what their problems are or their ailments and really looking for the best possible solution for their problems. And you know, um, when you mentioned that, Joe, when I first started volunteering at my first uh, center, at my first dispensary, um, I wasn't sure what to expect. The one thing, like he mentioned, that really blew me away was um, how people were um, just so open to, to tell you their experiences, what brought them there. And a lot of times the stories were pretty heartbreaking. A lot of people getting um, burned by their growers. And um, when that happens, they literally have nowhere else to go. I've even heard people tell stories of having to, you know, people in their 50s um, getting their medicine off of a 19 year old kid in their street because that's literally the only person that they can go to. Um, and if they get in trouble, they're going to be the headlining news of, you know, 50 year old guy gets popped for smoking pot. For sure. And um, ruins you know, his reputation and the kids. You know, for sure. And um, it's not something, you know, it would be like forcing patients to go get their prescription medications behind the pharmacy, um, you know, from somebody who got it from who knows where. Um, and the other thing that I think people mistake about the dispensary system is it literally takes the uh, black market element out of the whole equation. Now, don't get me wrong, the black market element is going to exist. It exists in every facet of our society. Um, but right now, as it stands, all the power is in the hands of the black market. They control, they regulate the entire market when it comes to marijuana. And this is something that people, not even citizens who smoke, but just every citizen in this country should want nothing in the hands of the black market. Um, we saw what happened to that with prohibition, which is why prohibition was repealed. It wasn't repealed because alcohol is safe. It was repealed because the alternative we found was far more dangerous. And now people are drinking all the way into their, you know, to their till their end, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. But at the same time, if it was to be legalized and regulated and whatnot, we could actually have people come in and off the street that would know, that would not normally be in this, you know, in this, sem essentially this circle or get the information. Like the people that are comfortable with us, um, to comfortable enough to come and talk to us and really get the right information should be able to go back and tell their, um, their circle about it, about the information to give to their friends so that they can get the proper health help if that is what they need. And you know, another important factor about the dispensaries is um, a lot of people, particularly seniors and people who are really, you know, debilitated with a condition or an illness, um, if you're only going to the street dealer, you have one option and that's essentially just the butt, just, you know, what people would say is, is pot, what you smoke. Um, but with the dispensary system, you get the added advantage of having tinctures, of having edibles, of having lotions and creams. Um, you have things that won't get you high, and that's another thing that's the myth. A lot of medical marijuana patients are trying not to get high. They're just trying to find comfort. And that's not something you can usually find. Your average street dealer isn't going to take his product or the time to turn that into lotions and creams and tinctures and, and whatnot. Right, and, and the other thing is that the lotions and the creams are, you know, generally made for pain relief and whatnot. And that's what, you know, a lot of people are seeking out is just to get to cut the edge so that they can survive the next day or two. But in all actuality, they get the comfort from the pain, but they also get other added effects. They're just the whole general morale of their life becomes positive. They start to go outside, enjoy the day. And then they start to notice that like, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to start to go to the doctor to get my nutritional health back on track. And then they really start to find the whole positive side of the whole plant in itself. Like it can, like the Rev was saying earlier, it can not only take care of your, you know, your ailments, but it can build your house. So you can essentially grow your medicine, grow your house, and then, you know, grow your food. You can put it into your salad and it has nutritional value, just like lettuce and, you know, vegetables. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
One of the things, that, speaking of the lotions, I remember, um, some of you might remember me, I used to work at Cannabosm, it was a center here in Eugene, um, and they had a product there, it was a cream, it was a lotion that um, did not have any psychoactive effects, it didn't get you high, and it was intended as a pain cream. Well, people were coming back to tell us it made their eczema disappear, their psoriasis cleared up. Um, these are the things that you can't get from the street, and these are the things, for instance, um, at Cannabosm and at the greener side, um, we use um, chemists to have the medicine tested to make sure there are no impurities, to make sure what you're getting is a pure product. Um, you know, people who are sick um, can't be ingesting any kind of tainted product, whether it's a pharmaceutical or whether it's a plant. And those are things that you can't get when you're going through the street, when you're going through the black market. Um, you know, a story that I tell people all the time, you know, they ask me, what was your experience like there? And the one story I could tell them is, um, you know, a gentleman came in that was about the same age as me in his mid-30s. Um, his sister had driven him from Florence, Oregon, over an hour. Um, he was having, he had about five seizures on the way over. And because his medication wasn't working, he, uh, he was out of uh, marijuana himself. She had heard of a place in Eugene, drove down there and showed up, and I had to hand carry him into the back room to get his medicine. And as we were leaving the, the, the facility, he had a seizure, fell and hit his head on the floor. And we helped him get up, we helped him get some medicine, but at the same time we were nervous because we were wondering, are there any police walking by? Is someone gonna drive by and see me administer this and call the police and say we're handing out drugs? And just to know that while this man was having a seizure and I'm comforting him, his sister's crying, I'm having to worry about whether or not this is gonna look bad if I give him his medicine that can help. This is where these centers come into play. They're very important for the people who need it, but also um, it does make the neighborhood safer. Um, people need to understand that if out, without a dispensary or a model like that to go to, we're only empowering the black market. It makes it safer not only for a number of reasons, because one, the, the patient doesn't want to be in an unsafe environment, and the people that are working there don't want to be in an unsafe environment, as well as you know the, the medicine is going to be safer for the patient getting the medicine from that place because like you were saying they do everybody does start testing and you know it's starting to not only provide the patient with a safe knowledge of what they're ingesting but it's also doing research that the government doesn't want to do or has done and isn't going to allow us to see correct and um, another uh, benefit is anybody who's ever called the state of oregon uh, specifically the medical marijuana program and asked them any questions you uh, have gotten the same answer everyone else got, and that is we can't help you with that. Um, if you're new to cannabis, you just got sick, you just got your medical marijuana card. Well, now you're you, safe to use it, but you can't. But I'm not going to tell you where to get it because that's illegal. So correct. They allow us to hold it, and you know, they don't allow us to get it anywhere. But if you try to get it, you know, off the street, like we were saying, you're just going to put yourself in jeopardy, and then put yourself in a dark alley somewhere where you might just get jumps for everything. And, and correct. And another thing too is, um, depending on the estimates, you know, they say that the marijuana industry, the black market, is billions of dollars a year. Um, that's never going to go away. This is something that people, even people who do not smoke marijuana, need to understand. Marijuana is never going to go away. It's not going to be eradicated like polio or some long ago disease that we'll never see again. It's staying here. So we have a decision: is that billions of dollars into the hands of cartels in the black market, or billions of dollars back into? our society right and what, it, and what it says here too is it's not like uh, it's gonna the places that are going to be operating are going to have to get a, um, a license in order to operate so not only is it going to be safer but you're going to have to prove to the state that you are on top of it you know you know what's going in your shop and what your members are getting and that you know should provide some safety and some comfort for the people that have no idea what cannabis is and they're laughing at their doctors that are telling them now to try it <laughs> And another thing, too, is this will also, I believe, slowly weed out who is legitimate and who is not. Um, every place that has to get registered to the state is, I mean, it's going to have a beacon on them that says medical marijuana facility here. So there's not going to be any underground places that will last very long. And if they do, you know, they'll be found out. You know, I'm a big supporter of the legalization of marijuana, but I'm also a big supporter of people following the law. And, you know, if there are people who are going to take advantage of this, I'm all for getting rid of them, you know. And, but until we have places that are legitimate, how can we tell who is legitimate and who is not? And the people who are legitimate will use the places, you know. The people who come into these facilities, 
um, it's a courageous act because they have no idea what's going to happen. They have no idea are they being set up. Um, so to just walk in, you know, lets us know that this is where they are, that they're willing to put themselves out there, not knowing what's going to happen, and make sure that they get their medication. And I think people and they can get their medication from the places that they want too. Like um, they can, the facility can also um, have the patients and the growers meet up so that they can actually discuss a, in full detail what they each just expect from each other. It's not on any, you know, it's on complete neutral playing ground. Everybody should be, you know, on the same page when everybody shakes hands and they go home. The the grower's happy, you know, to be helping out this patient. The patient's happy to be uh, getting his medicine, you know, and it should be, there shouldn't be any issues because there's been time and time again where I've heard either the patient has gotten ripped off or the grower has gotten ripped off by the patient coming in with a whole bunch of his friends demanding his medicine. Like there is, the patient grower connection thing is two side, is definitely a two sided coin. There's there's horror stories on either side, but to be honest, like the whole the whole program is to benefit the patients, but also to protect the growers that are putting themselves out there in order to grow for that patient and get them what they need. Absolutely, and um, another thing I would like to mention, we are discussing House Bill 3460, and one thing I'd like to you know end with for people is, you don't have to vote on something simply because it's something that you do. People need to understand that whether or not you smoke marijuana, will ever use marijuana, these bills affect you. Um, a lot of people are wondering, well, how, how's that? Well, supposing that your next door neighbor is an illegal medical marijuana grower, and you think that this doesn't affect you until his house gets robbed or until his house gets raided, or something goes down on your street, people always seem to think that, well, if I don't use it, I don't need to vote on it. Everything involves all of us. We're all affected in one way or another. Um, yep. We so all have to vote on it. We all have to make our voices heard. Um, you know, just call your representatives, call everybody that you can. Um, you know, Thursday they're going to, or soon they're going to vote on um, House Bill, uh, the numbers, you know, um, 281, 281 and 3460. Well, that's all we got for this week, guys. Thank you, and um, we will see you next week. See us on YouTube. Bye now. Bye. Why these people who want to do so much good for everyone who call themselves governments and this and that, why them say you must not use the herb?